Hello and welcome to the short 20-minute wrap-up of basically Chapter 20, DNA Tools and Biotechnology. I'm going to go very fast, so try and keep up with me. Basically, biotechnology is the manipulation of organisms or their components to make useful products. Or as I said in class, basically DNA is using um, your knowledge of biotechnology in order to make something and make money. And so a number of things that we're going to look at is uh, basically dependent on what we call nucleic acid hybridization. In genetic engineering, this is the direct manipulation of genes for practical purpose. What allows us to do this is that DNA sequences kind of stick to one another by the anneal pairing, and we'll talk to that a, a little bit in a second. You do need to know uh, about this thing that we call DNA sequencing. Uh, again, in the next couple of slides, you will see how DNA is sequenced. I'm not going to necessarily go into it in all that much detail. Um, the, uh, here are machines. Here are people working on those machines and in different methods. But um, um, we now have next generation. We have third generation DNA sequencers, which highly automates this. And basically what we do is we take a genome and we chop it up into little pieces and we sequence each one of those pieces. We sequence them many times and then we use computers to kind of put those pieces back together. Ultimately, what we're going for is to try and get the um, genetic sequence down to about a thousand base pairs uh, for our particular genome. And actually what they're doing is they're trying to even sequence individual cells. Now, along with getting sequenced, what we actually need to do is sometimes is to manipulate the DNA. And we can do that by what we call DNA cloning. It's not cloning a whole individual like Dolly the sheep, but this is cloning specific genes or pieces of DNA in order to understand how they work. Again, this is a process of recombinant DNA where we can insert uh, a specific sequence of DNA into a plasmid and we could see how it works. And again, this is gene cloning. And essentially this is it here, is that we can take a plasmid or a vector DNA, something that will hold our DNA, we can put our particular gene of interest into that DNA, and then we can put that in human beings, we can put it in corn, we can use it to clean up oil spills. There's a number of different things that we can do with this. And so again, a cloning vector is a plasmid that's used to clone a foreign gene. Um, uh, these bacterial plasmid vectors are, are, are very widely available. In fact, we could probably even use them in the lab. How we do this is that we use restriction enzyme sites. These are um, protein enzymes that can bind to and cut specific sequences of DNA. And these are called what we call restriction sites. Restriction enzymes bind to restriction sites. And how they work is they have these kind of staggered ends that we call these sticky ends. And those sticky ends can bond together due to complementary base pairing. And then we can use an enzyme called DNA ligase to kind of seal those bonds together. And this figure 20.6 is exactly what we need to do. So we take a vector, we cut it at a restriction site, it would cut this uh, site right here. It leaves these sticky ends. We can then take a piece of DNA that we cut and we have these sticky ends sticking out and we can ligate it into that place and now we have a plasmid that we could put in a bacteria or we can put in a donkey or whatever and we could have it expressed. And so be aware of this and again we looked at this a little bit during class. Now how we take a look at these pieces of DNA. Um, again, sequencing will be better. We use a, a process that we call gel electrophoresis. And that is DNA is a negatively charged molecule. And so when we put DNA in an electric field, here's the cathode, here's the anode, positive side, that DNA being negatively charged due to the phosphodiester bonds will move towards the anode. We can then use a dye. This one here is using ethidium bromide and we can see our little DNA bands there and we can determine how big they are by comparing them to known um, fragment sizes of DNA. Um, Another tool that we can use for isolating DNA is basically PCR, it stands for polymerase chain reaction. And basically what's going on here is, is here is our DNA. And so um, these, uh, again, uh, the, the strands of the DNA 
are called anti-parallel because they are in two uh, opposite directions. Uh, they are held together by hydrogen bonds. We can do it through a process of denaturation. We can heat up that pieces of DNA and we could separate those pieces of DNA. We would then anneal those pieces of DNA. Now normally these two pieces may anneal back together, but again if we have small stretches of DNA and we have lots and lots of those small stretches of DNA, these pieces of DNA are more likely to bind to their matching sites than the other ones. Then these DNAs, the three prime hydroxyl N, can act as a um, basically temp uh, template and the, the one can template, and we will make another strand. And so in this way, we're able to go from one strand of DNA to two strands of DNA to four strands of DNA, eight, and so on. And after 30 of these cycles, we can end up with a billion-fold amplification of our DNA target. Isn't this wonderful? We're using sequence. And we're using the natural property of DNA to amplify itself. Um, uh, again, here is a um, animation on cloning of the genes. I'm going to go out of there. Um, uh, eukaryotic genes are a little bit different because we need an expression vector. Uh, eukaryotic genes, because they have introns and exons, a lot of times we have to do what's called a, a C uh, a copy of the messenger RNA in order to make it, which is a little bit different. It's a lot harder to get DNA into um, a eukaryotic cell, and we can use something that we call electroporation, which is where we send an electrical charge across the plasma membrane to transiently make holes in the plasma membrane. We can use very thin needles, inject DNA directly into the cell, and we can use a thing called lipofection. There's a number of different things that we can use. And uh, what this is basically showing is we talked a little bit earlier on in this class about the PAC-6 gene. And basically uh, what was going on with that is that um, this gene that's responsible for basically the eye is conserved among, among many organisms. And basically we can take the insect PAC-6 gene and put it into another vertebrate. And quite frankly, they work um, just as well, even though they're uh, different. Uh, again, one of the things that we can do is analyze gene expression. That is, when is a certain sequence of DNA turned on or when is it turned off? We can do in situ hybridization. So in this in situ hybridization is we're binding to stretches of messenger RNA um, using these fluorescent probes and we can tell where that uh, and so here is the fruit fly and we can tell where these different genes are being expressed and we can use several different dyes so we can look at several different sequences so again it's very wonderful and beautiful uh, pictures uh, reverse transcriptase is basically where we can use um, uh, certain techniques in order to uh, amplify a piece of messenger RNA and then so what we can do is here in the embryonic stages here, uh, we can look at kind of where these um, pieces of DNA are being made. And so maybe in the egg it isn't being made. And as this organism matures, it, we see more and more of an expression of this piece of DNA. Uh, a very interesting concept now is we use microarrays, small, very small pieces of glass that have maybe two or three thousand different um, pieces of DNA on there. And so what we can do is we can take messenger RNA from um, different tissues and we can put them on there and compare them, uh, compare this kind of dot-like pattern and see. And so what we see where we see no um, uh, hybridization, basically that is that particular gene is not being expressed. Where we see hybridization, that gene is being expressed. We have certain genes that are turned on all the time. Those are what we call housekeeping genes. We have certain genes that are induced to turn on. We have certain genes that are, are deregulated. And so this is an amazing technology and it actually allows us to do a number of different things. Um, next, what we want to do is when we identify a gene, we identify when and when the gene is turned on, we can actually do things like mutate a gene and see what happens when I break this gene. What's going to be a, the effect on this organism? And so we can do this process that we call in vitro mutagenesis. We can try and make a gene better or not. 
Um, that's a permanent thing. We can kind of temporarily shut down genes using a piece of interfering RNA. So this is a piece of an RNA that will bind to the messenger RNA. Cells, for the most part, dislike double-stranded pieces of RNA because they look a lot like a virus, and so it will destroy that messenger RNA. And so now we have a way of making a drug, probably a piece of RNA, that will inhibit the expression of a certain um, gene. And now it's not permanent, and so it's a wonderful thing that we can do. We can also take a look at what we call SNRP, single nucleotide polymorphism. This is a little bit older technology and is probably dying out. Um, this is what 23andMe tends to look at. And so what we would see is, so here is a, 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 a loci of a particular gene. Uh, again, what we can see is, is we may not know that a gene... Um, where a particular gene is in our genome, and we don't. We know we've sequenced the entire genome, but it's like kind of having an Encyclopedia Britannica and not knowing the English language. So we have all this wealth of information in here, but we can't look at it. So what we're doing with SNRPs is a company like 23andMe is just trying to get a lot of data. How many people have a specific single nucleotide polymorphism? And if this is associated, let's say this gene-causing allele is obesity. If we could say every Everyone who's obese has this SNRP, everyone who's not obese doesn't have this SNRP, then we have a really good way of, of kind of identifying what those genes are. And that's one of the things that what 23andMe is doing. Uh, again, in biotechnology, we're looking at stem cells. Uh, stem cells are relatively unspecialized cell that can reproduce itself indefinitely or under certain conditions can differentiate into one or more types of specialized cell. A stem cell, believe it or not, put into a uterus, I'm kind of faking it in here, can produce a whole other organism. So they are wonderful cells, and they are the cells that our body uses to repair itself. And so the idea is if we could take these cells and put them back into the body, we can repair almost any damage that has been done to the body. Now, we've been doing cloning for a long time. In plants, plants are very easy to clone. We take single cells or very small fragments of tissue from a plant, apply the right hormones, and we have a brand new plant. It is much harder to do this in animals. We've been able to do it with frogs for a little bit. Mammals, as recently as 2003, was the first time that we were able to do that. And basically, we did this by taking um, uh, mammary cells, taking out the nucleus, putting in the nucleus from a normal one, and then putting it in utero and getting uh, that uh, microorganism. Here's an example. Uh, this cat here is a cloned cat. This is called carbon copy. What's really kind of interesting is the original cat was calico carbon copy is not calico and that's due to um, some things that I'm not going to get into there. Um, again, how can we change this um, uh, regulation? There's a, there's a possibility for us to change regulation. Um, I'm not going to get into stem cells uh, that much. We did talk about this. We can. Uh, the trouble is with stem cells is where do they reside in the body? Uh, because again, once you are no longer an embryo, you've kind of gotten rid of those cells. You don't kind of need those cells. And uh, an idea is that we can take regular cells and we can induce the pluripotent stem st uh, state in those cells. So we do have these IPSs that we've been able to do. It's a little bit tricky because we're using, uh, if you recognize any of these OC3 SOCs and the MYC and the KLF, these are all oncogenes, things that have been implicated in cancer. So we don't necessarily want to uh, put those cells back in people. Um, uh, diagnosis and treatment, so, so we can use PCR to look at this. Uh, gene therapy is an alteration of the affected individual's genes. Wouldn't be better, rather than giving somebody some a drug for a few days, to change their genes so that we can basically cure them forever. And so there's a number of different things that people are doing. We can use PCR to make pharmaceutical products. Uh, we have uh, we can express it in animals. And so uh, I think this here is where we're uh, converting a hepatitis gene in the milk of, of this particular goat. So when you milk the, milk the goat, we have this substance that we can purify our particular proteins out of. People are saying, why don't we just use urine? And we can get a lot more urine out of um, animals than we can uh, milk. And um, uh, we can use uh, PCR to do forensic evidence. This is a, an individual that was released after 17 years of prison, and his DNA showed that he was not the individual that 
that did it. Uh, environmental cleanup, a number of views, a uh, number of uses expressed interest in environmental uh, cleanup. So we can put in the genes to break down uh, the enzymatic genes to break down various things like hydrocarbons uh, in uh, uh, in organisms, and then. Um, um, do this um, genetic engineering in plants we can do this uh, concern with plants is genetically modified uh, organisms that we use as food some people are um, think that we should study these a little bit more before we do that and that's basically about it I'm not going to get into this as much so uh, and a little bit early in roughly about 15 minutes that is our process so 